Okay, let's see if we can do this without the camera breaking down. I took out my flash drive. You see in front of you a temporarily revised year 1077 roster. I'm going to walk through it. You cannot download this yet because it's not wholly correct. Or it's just I'm having a brain fart and I can't figure out how to make it be what I need it to be. I, did, I always have this problem when I get to this step. Okay, let's just go through what it is. Maybe you won't have the brain fart. And you can see where I'm screwing up. And you'll tell me if you're in the mood. Okay? Because I'm so close and yet so far the answer to this thing. Okay, again, the point is that Paul in his meter is making an issue of the distances and especially the equidistances from the time that he's writing <coughs> to past and yet future events in history to lay out a scenario of what if the rapture and the effect of church upon that. His whole theme of Ephesians, as will also be true um, in the book of Hebrews, which Paul did not write, he was dead, that's Hebrews 13, 23 telling you that. His whole theme in Ephesians, which is carried on by whoever wrote Hebrews, is to tell you how the covenant changed. Okay? And he wants to reassure both the Greeks and, you know, the Jews who are in the diaspora who are reading what he writes. And I, I could almost prove that he's writing this while he's in Jerusalem, still in prison. He wants to demonstrate how God is rescuing the Jews by means of the Gentiles even as God rescued the Gentiles by means of the Jews during the age of Torah. This is commonly known this period by Jews as called the age of Messiah. It's also supposed to last for 2,000 years. I can't find any biblical justification for that term. But the math and the way history is played at least makes that an apt phrase, okay? So this is what all these numbers in front of you are designed to do. They are not, obviously they're not Bible codes. Paul's not just playing a lot of games. He's trying to show the convergences of time in Israel's history, okay? And you were raised with this stuff when you were a kid. So this would have been real familiar to the writer, to the readers that he was writing to, both Greek and Jewish. But of course it's not familiar to us because, you know, all this stuff was not transmitted down from the parents to the kids. But, there's important but, all the numbers you see in front of you come straight from Bible. They are not coming from the meter. The meter is making use of the dates in the Bible. And that's why I'm paying attention to how Paul is using the dates in the Bible by means of his meter. So what I'm trying to say is that what you see on screen are all dates in the Bible. You can verify them yourself and ignore the meter. But the meter matters because it tells us how they read the text how they used the dates. And since we're all confused today about what the dates are, this is going to be pretty helpful to hermeneutics. And you see those clues by means of the meter. It is a rhetorical style that is traditional starting with Moses in Psalm 90. Okay, so now the question is, what are these dates and why is Paul doing this? And then I'll leave you to proof the dates yourself, but I gotta explain some of them because there are a lot of scholar mistakes that mask over the efficacy of the Bible's numbers. Okay, this calculator might disappear every once in a while. Okay, 
when it does I'll click on it to bring it back see like right now all right let's let's first start talking about a couple of things year 1077 from David's birth 4143 from Adam the scholar mistake is thinking that David died at age 70 he died at age 77 you can verify that in first Kings 1 through first Kings 2 um, 39 which is the third year after David died you can also verify that by looking at 1 Chronicles 22 and following, which tells you what David did from age 70 to 77. That's the first thing. The second thing about those same passages is that if you read them, you will notice that there was a sort of civil war, not quite a civil war, but at least a, a succession contest between Solomon and his brothers. Okay? And I want to say the other brother was um, Adajana. All right. What happened to David at 70, and you'll see him talk about this in, in Chronicles, and I want to say it's in 1 Chronicles 29, 28, somewhere in there, retrospective exposition. What David had done was at age 70, he gave the crown to Solomon because God told him to do that. All right. But he reasoned, and you see the reasoning in the, in the, the first Chronicles 28, 29, somewhere in there. My son is too young and inexperienced. He doesn't know what he's doing. Whenever you have a split in leadership, that promotes dissension within the ranks, and each vies in factions in order to get some kind of, you know, political favoritism. And that's what how you see one kings open where, you know, um, Bathsheba ends up going to Solomon and asking, you know, well, one of David's concubines, you know, Adajna wants to marry. And Solomon says to her, don't you understand that that means he wants to take over the kingdom, dummy? So Bathsheba and Nathan get together and they go to David and they say to David, listen, you got to do something about this problem. Okay, that's all happening between David's age 70 and 77, and obviously, because he's not doing what God told him to do and backing his son the way he was supposed to, he was sick. Okay, that's Psalm 32 5, Psalm 66 18. You know, David's human like everybody else, he had his bad days with God, and he was having some bad days at those, that time. So, between age 70 and 77. Solomon was on the throne, at least nominally, with, with varying support from David. So that Solomon's rule started in 970, this is really important, 970 B.C. and ends at 930 B.C., and most scholars know that. But the problem is, is that when you get to 1 Kings 1, 1 Kings 6, 1, and they look at fourth year of Solomon, they're not tying into 1 Kings 2.39, which is the third year after David's death, and realizing it's the fourth year of Solomon after David's death. In Hebrew, you don't need to say that, because you already had specified the third year in 1 Kings 2.39. All right? So the third year after David died, the temple foundation was laid. That was 3146 from Adam. Okay, that's real important. Seven years later, the temple was completed, which you also see in 1 Kings 6 1. Or 1 Kings 6. And then you have the companion. Uh, passages and Chronicles. Okay, so that's a total of 10 years from David's death in year 4, starting at the beginning of year 4 in Ziv. The first temple started to be built. It was finished really seven and a half years later. You have to read the Greek text and the Hebrew text to get the whole story. And then Solomon sits Okay, and what I gotta try to figure out is it's three and a half years somehow on both sides, total of seven. 
or you know something like that I've, I've got to hone down the six month problem because it keeps cropping up every time I do these numbers basically the temple is dedicated 950 BC okay it starts its construction okay David dies 963 okay first Kings 6 1 tells you that it starts its construction in 960 and then it stops seven years later and isn't dedicated until 950 a little over three years later probably three and a half years I gotta hone that down it's dedicated on one of 950 BC and that's in first Kings 9 when Solomon prays the famous prayer anybody looks towards your temple and prays hear him and of course that's what Daniel's doing in Daniel 9 too all right so God is dating anniversaries in 1000s from the temple foundation not merely from the temple dedication so the temple is dedicated 13 years after David dies so here's David's death at age 77 year 1077 from David's birth is the 987th year of the temple okay so that's replicated down here the Lord was supposed to die a thousand years after David did that was his deadline and that's the deadline that creates the 62 weeks boundary in Daniel 9:25 and 26 okay temple year 987 was the end of time because it would have been a thousand years after David died okay that's the most important thing to get out of this you got a three-year front and a three-year back with the seven years of the temple in between which you can't tell when you look at the scholars and all the write-ups on this topic because they're always thinking David died at 70 number one number two when they look at first king 6 1 and they say fourth year of Solomon they're just dismissing that as a scribal error and they're not they're not their brains are, are off their brains are out they're not looking at first kings 239 to understand oh it's the fourth year after David's death of Solomon not merely Solomon's fourth year it's Solomon's eleventh year for crying out loud so that when you see the twenty years that Solomon spent building his own buildings in the temple which is part of this whole chronology between first Kings 6 and first Kings 9 which has its companion passages and chronicles it's very confusing to read for scholars okay and I wasn't able to figure it out either until I did the whole timeline going all the way back to Adam and that's what brought all these numbers you know into focus and how I was able to finally balance them okay so there's a 13 year difference between David's age at death and the dedication of the temple by contrast the temple foundation was seven years earlier see this is this is a play on the 14 year debit that Israel had okay it it might even be a running tally of the cause of it I haven't worked all that out yet okay but relative to David's kingship we get a different set of numbers that God is highlighting because year 1050 from David's Hebron kingship is year 4146 from Adam which is the thousandth anniversary of of first king 6 1 when the temple foundation began God dates from temple foundation beginnings and endings even as he dates from birth years and death years he does that all throughout the Bible all these numbers about the 490s and the 1000s and the 1050s are based on significant births and day and deaths births of people births of covenants okay a kingship is a type of covenant okay so that's where this is all coming from so what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to ferret out and I haven't finished it yet all the 1077s this one's a no-brainer 4143 
That is temple year 987. So the significant thing about 4143 is that it's the outer limit of time which God uses in Daniel 9, uh, 25 and 26 when he gives the numbers to Daniel because Daniel knew all this information. Daniel's own prayer is metered based on these timelines. So God's just responding to Daniel in Daniel's own language. In fact, what God says is metered also. In Daniel 9, 24 through 27, I did the videos and I did the write-up on it in the Psalm 90 playlist. So, our first stop was 4143, outer limit of time, deadline for Messiah to die. Okay, so he dies in the thousandth anniversary, he was supposed to die the thousandth anniversary of David's death. First David, last David. The sum of the two is 1077. When you're playing games to get the, the sevens, the sevening to work, you have to make that 1078 instead of 1077. But your 77th year is the beginning of your 78th year. So that's why those numbers work so well. Piggyback beginning on end. So when I reach my 60th birthday this year, I will be in my 61st year. Okay. So it's the same thing as, you know, 1077, 1078. So this should be pretty clear to you. Outer limit of time. Temple year 987. You'll notice it's 13 years short. That might actually end up being 14. It's in its 14th year short. Because the 14 year short is a running theme from Psalm 90 forward. That there's going to be a 14 year shortage. So this might be 13 as of end of year, 14 as of beginning of year. I gotta play with the numbers and see, you know, how to round this properly. Okay, I really need to find out what month David died. Okay. And that it's probably in scripture somewhere. I just have to find it. Alright, so that one is easy enough. Okay, now year 1070 from David's birth is therefore 4136 from Adam. In other words, seven years shorter. David retires at age 70, that's why that matters. Christ is going to end up dying. See, I color coded them so it would be easy to match. Christ ends up actually dying right here. So Christ dies, and this is why scholars get confused also. Christ dies in the thousandth anniversary of David's retirement, not the thousandth anniversary of David's death. That's why they're missing the extra seven when they look at Daniel 9. That's why preterists think that they've accounted for the time when they haven't. There's a hanging chad. And that's why dispensationalists feel constrained to use lunar years so they can get rid of that extra seven that they find. No, use solar years, there really is an extra seven, and this is why. David was 77 when he died, he retired when he was 70. The extra seven years occur between 1 Chronicles 22 and the end of the book, and also in 1 Kings 1, 1, um, through chapter 2, sometime before uh, 239, just before it, Okay? So Christ actually dies seven years earlier, which is the ten, year 1070 from his birth, which is the thousandth year of his consul, you know, the thousandth year of his um, being king, retiring at 70, you know, counting, stopping his kingship year at 70, because he retires, not dies. Okay. Paul is making an issue in the meter of the anaphora about 4173 from Adam. So that is temple year from construction, finish, dedication. Okay, that is, that is temple year um, 1017. That would therefore be temple foundation year 1027. Paul's making an issue of that. I do not yet know why. I have to play with it more. But he's making an issue of this particular year. It's 1077 years from David's Hebron kingship 
to this year, all right? And then another 1077 years takes you to the end of the millennium. David's Hebron kingship, by contrast, is 1050 years from Abram's maturation. So Paul's linking up a 1050 to a 1077, and then there's another 1077 after it. That's a sort of rhetorical style of equidistance. The idea, in part, is to make the numbers easier to remember. The other idea is to communicate, as always, doctrine. But I don't know what he means by that yet. I haven't done all the math, but I'm going through what this math is, so at least you, you might be able to see it where I'm missing it. So here's our next year, 1077. Maybe it matters, maybe it doesn't. Year 1077 from David's united kingship is seven years later. 4, 4180 from Adam. That's temple year 1024. Okay. And that would be temple foundation year 1034. Okay, so then, well, I'm not sure what that all adds up to, but 4180 from Adam is down here. The Lord is age 77 then. Okay, so in the year that's 1077 from David's united kingship, the Lord himself is 77. See, Paul's definitely playing this game about the 77s. I just don't understand... Why? Is it just a device? I doubt that. There's something else in history he's tying to. He's doing the same thing that Mary did in her Magnificat, and that took me a whole month just to figure out how she did her math. I've been two years trying to figure out Paul's math, and I'm not done yet. But just so you see the relationship, 1077 from David's United Kingship, which would be Temple Year 1024, Temple Foundation Year 1034, is the same as the Lord's age 77. So why is that connection being made? All right? And then we get down into some more simple things. Year 1000 from David's death, the outer limit of time, 4143 from Adam. That's when the Lord was scheduled to die. That's Daniel 9:26 and 27's outer time limit, temple year 987. It didn't happen. He died seven years earlier in temple year 980, as you see here and here. In year 1070 from David's birth, year 1000 from his retirement. So, what about year 1000 from David's Hebron kingship? That's 4096 from Adam. 3096 from Adam is when he became king over Hebron. That was 1050 years from Abram's supermaturation. Okay, that's temple f dedication year 940. Okay, which is temple foundation year 950. All right. Then here we got a year 1000 from David's United Kingship is 4103. This is the year the Lord is born. So that's why these are color coded the same. That's temple year 947, temple foundation year 957. Well, this part of it's obviously significant here because that was the promise. But how else is it significant? That's what I'm trying to find out. What other dates in Israel's history is being are, are converging, you know, are being balanced. We already covered this, Lord's death. Okay, the, we already covered this, Lord's age at death, what it should have been. Okay, and then here, 4146, okay, is Temple Year 990 from dedication. But, and here's where it's important, Year 4146 is also Temple Foundation Year 1000. God's balancing to that and so is Paul. Because that's year 1050 from David's Hebron kingship. As well as Temple Foundation Year 1000. So these two are paired up on purpose. And that Paul is timing when he writes based on this. Because he's playing games with the 14.
in his meter, just like Moses had done, just like Isaiah had done, just like Daniel had done, just like Mary had done. I don't see Mary and Daniel play too much with it, but they do reference it. The 14 year overage, because the temple goes down, and it'll take 140 years for time to balance again, but there were only 126 years left on the temple when it fell, so there's a 14 year shortage. That's why there's a tribulation. That's why you got two sevens. That's why Christ had to die in the 62nd week instead of the 61st. And unfortunately, he dies seven years early, so you got the 14 remaining, and that's what Paul is talking about here. He is accounting for how does this 14 get done? Because by the time Christ dies, the 14 is still owed. So now the church is in effect, how's that all going to play? What's going to happen to Israel? All the same questions that were asked of Christ in Acts 1. Okay, Paul's addressing that by means of the meter, because by the meter people accounted time, and by the meter they could remember time, and by the meter they could see how God balanced time. But the time itself is in scripture verses themselves. The meter's just making use of those verses by means of meter. So the Lord would have been 43 here, David would have been 80, 1080 in the year 4, 10, you know, 4146 from Adam. Okay, but that's year 1050 from David's Hebron kingship. If it's 1050 from David's Hebron kingship, it means it's year 1043 from David's United kingship. That's why the Lord is age 43, because he was born in the thousandth year of David's United kingship. Okay, now this is the part that's trickiest of all, and I, I don't have an answer yet. Paul is writing end of year 4159 from Adam. He's doing it on purpose to create an equidistance here and here. He's deliberately doing this. He's picking the year he writes. Okay, this translates into 56 AD, which according to the scholars, Paul was still in jail in Jerusalem in 56 AD. So, we say that Ephesians was written in 58, but it might have been written in 56, but not distributed until 58 when Paul got out of Jerusalem. I have to still work that out because there might be, you know, we got that three-year problem in our calendar. There's also another three-year problem of similar import in the Roman AUC calendar. So it's like, well, is Paul adjusting the calendar then and it's really 58? Or what's going on? I'm going to find the answer if I have to die first I'm gonna find the answer but this is when he's writing he's picking it on purpose Christ would have been 56 that year and you can see the three-year variance just from this alone so there's there's something going on here temple year from dedication is 1003 that's real significant too temple year from foundation would therefore be 1013 all right, X this year and the flood year are the same. Okay. Did I fix that? No, I didn't fix that. I got to fix this. Oh, no, that that's... No, this is three years later. Yeah, three years later, that's fine, that's fine. I didn't fix this. Let's fix it now. That's, that's ten years later. So that's nine. No, that's three more years later. So that's 83. Yeah, that's 83. 446, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. No, that's fine, that's fine, that's all fine. That's all fine, sorry. Oh. If I seem to be going crazy, I am. Okay, so 4146 is the is the thousandth anniversary of the Temple Foundation of 1 Kings 6 1. That is 1050 from David's Hebron kingship. There are other importances to this year. I haven't figured them all out yet. Paul is making a big stink out of the year in which he writes. He's piggybacking on where Mary left off, like all the writers do. In other words, Isaiah picks up where Moses leaves off. Daniel picks up where Isaiah leaves off. You know, uh, Mary picked up where Daniel left off, and Paul's picking up where Mary left off. Their meters are all timelines. 
and then they piggyback on each other and they rope to the the you know the prior chapter as it were of the timeline it's real helpful to know because that way you know what the Bible dates are and what they really mean by what they're saying okay the next important date again that Paul is focusing on 1077 from David's Hebron kingship is the Lord's own age 70 now 1077 from David's Hebron kingship is 1070 from his united kingship so of course the Lord is age 70 and that's the same year now he's making he's making an issue of this okay and that's temple year from dedication 1017 1027 from foundation year that's 14 years after Paul writes <coughs> so he's focusing on 14 years before 14 years after he writes that's an equidistance rhetorical style and he's focusing on this and we'll continue more in the next increment because I need to get some water